السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين This is just a short quick reminder to my brothers and my sisters in Trinidad and Tobago that I remind you to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to fear Allah jalla wa ala and to have patience and to bear that which has been that which is placed upon you of burden and hardship and difficulties to be patient with that because all of this barakallahu feekum is a trial from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lockdowns masajid being closed you can't pray you can't go to the masjid so a lot of the people even you know they have to stay in their homes shops are closed even in the last 10 nights people can't attend the masajid in many cases in many countries of the world many cities of the world because of these lockdown regulations upon us barakallahu feekum is to have sabr not to become angry not to react not to be reactionary but rather to have sabr Because these affairs are not in your control. They are not in your control. But to have sabr and call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to free you, free you and to save you from these calamities and these hardships. That is what is obligatory upon you. Not to become angry with your neighbors. Not to become angry with your family members. Not to despair and lose hope. That is not how we are, barakallahu feekum. That we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly and, and you know, throughout our days and nights that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us patience ربنا أفرغ علينا صبرا وتوفنا مسلمين. Our Lord, pour out upon us patience and cause us to die as Muslims. So we are always asking Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to give us patience and remember that trials and tribulations, that they are something that is sent upon the righteous people, just as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that indeed those who are tried the most by Allah are the prophets than those who resemble them. than those who resemble them. So if you are a worshipper of Allah, you obey Allah, you do not fall into that which is haram. You do not wrong the people. You do not commit dhulm. You are not difficult upon those in whose hands is not their affair. You know, they, are not, they have no control over whether you know, a masjid can open or close. This is in the hands of the authorities. And likewise, we do not shout in the streets. Likewise, we do not demonstrate in the streets. We are patient. We make dua to Allah. And we advise those in authority because that is the duty of the Muslim. Like the Prophet wasallam said that indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with you, with, uh, pleased with you with, for three, with three things. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is displeased with you with three things. So what, what are the three things that Allah is pleased with you to have, to have a quality of? And that is that you worship Allah and that you do not associate partners with Allah. Secondly, وَعْتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Secondly, that you all hold on to the rope of Allah, meaning the kitab and the sunnah, and that you do not divide. And thirdly, that you give sincere advice to those in authority over you. So, this is how we behave. When we see something in society that displeases us, we, some, we see something from those in authority that displeases us, then we advise them. We advise them and we give them sincere advice, barakallahu feekum. We do not rebel and we do not shout in the streets and we do not, you know, scream and shout about, you know, the, the rulers and, the, uh, and, and so on and so forth. Because that does not benefit. We are not people of demonstration and marching in the streets and shouting in the marketplaces because that is not the way of the Prophet wasallam. So what do we do? We have sabr. We give sincere advice. We can disseminate authentic knowledge, of course, whether in religion and whether in science. If you are a person who has some knowledge in scientific in, in the scientific field and in medicine and so on then there's no harm in you conveying that knowledge but you do not barakallahu feekum rile up the people against their rulers in the muslim lands and likewise in the non-muslim lands you are not from those people who cause commotion barakallahu feekum you advise you sincerely advise the people you can teach the people that which is good for them that which is bad for them in their affairs of deen and in the affairs of dunya ربنا آتنا في في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا أذاب النار. Oh Allah, give us that which is best in this world and best in the hereafter, and save us from the fire. So we we ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for all of the affairs of goodness in our worldly affairs, that which will bring us closer to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, that will protect us from harm, protect our families from harm and difficulty, and we do not despair. My brothers and sisters, rather we believe in Allah and we try to perfect our iman. The one who loves for Allah, the one who hates for Allah, the one who gives for Allah, the one who takes for Allah 
Indeed, he has perfected Iman. So we try to perfect our Iman with righteous deeds. We move, you know, if we see an obstacle in the path, we remove the obstacle in the path, even if it be a thorn or a bone in the path or a rock in the path, we remove it because it is a sadaqah for you, as the Prophet ﷺ said. Enjoying the good and forbidding the evil is a sadaqah for you. A person who cannot see because he is blind or that he is, you know, his sight is difficult and you guide him and you tell him, I will take you across the road or I will take you to the shop, then that is a sadaqah for you. A person who is lost and you show him directions, that is a sadaqah for you. Feeding yourself is a sadaqah for you. Feeding your children is a sadaqah for you. Clothing your daughters is a sadaqah for you. Having patience with your family is a sadaqah for you. Being patient with your neighbor is a sadaqah for you. Your neighbor comes to you and he needs help and you give him that which he needs to fulfill you know, some of the hardships that he's going through. All of that is a sadaqah for you. The doors of goodness and the door of earning the, the doors of earning the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are numerous and they are not close to you, even in lockdown. You know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ease this affair for the believers and for the Muslims and for the people of, of, of you know the humans in general for mankind. May Allah li, you know relieve them of these difficulties and these hardships. Barakallahu feekum. And this is what we hope, and this is you know, you have time now. You want to do something, you know, what's, don't get angry. You know, it's hard, of course, to control one's anger, but you control it. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said that the strong one is not the one who is strong in body, you know, who can overpower another person physically. Rather, the strong one is the one who can control his nafs in times of anger. So you control yourself and you make dua to Allah. Don't commit dhulm upon others. Work with your communities to resolve these difficulties. If you are in a, you know, like in Trinidad and Tobago, if you are undergoing lockdown, then there's no harm in you contacting the authorities and, and speaking to them and advising them. Maybe, you know, one of the heads of the masajid can go and speak to them and advise them that this is something that is difficult upon the people and there is no need for this. And here is the proof for this from the scientific background. There is no harm. Why? Because this is giving nasiha. Or that you say to them that we understand what you're doing, but is there any way, is there any kind of like, you know, that we can circumvent some of the hardships that we are going through to make it easier for us because Eid is coming and our families need to, is there something that we can do that, that you will allow us to do to make this easy for us? There is no harm in this. Because all of this is ta'awun ala al-birri wa taqwa. And ta'awun ala al-birri wa taqwa can be with anyone, with your wife, with your children, with your neighbors, with your communities. That you cooperate with people upon birr and taqwa. You know, you can cooperate with them, barakallahu feekum, with the believers, with Ahlul Sunnah, with the Salafiyun. And likewise, you can speak to a non-Muslim with kind words, with reminders, advising them, advising your communities, advising your community leaders to give them nasiha, to gain your rights also. You can go and do this. But what you don't do, barakallahu feekum, is cause commotion. What you don't do is get depressed. What you don't do is get anxious. What you don't do is, you know, accuse others and look down upon the people and get angry with the, you know, with the Salafi Masjid in your communities or the Masjid of Sunnah and Salafiyya in your communities. Don't get angry with them. You know that this affair is not in their hands. So what do you do? You have sabr. Barakallahu feekum. Sabr, how many times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran with regard to sabr, inna Allah ma'asabirin, that indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with the patient, is, is with the patient ones. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned this in the Quran, fadkuruni adkurkum, remember me and I shall remember you. Washkuruni wa la takfurun, be grateful to me and do not be ungrateful. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, that you should seek the aid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sabr and salah. With sabr and salah. Seek the aid of Allah, meaning with patience and with prayer. Seek the aid of Allah. You want the aid of Allah? Just say you seek the aid of Allah. Barakallahu feekum. And Allah will aid you. Inna Allah ma'asabirin. And indeed Allah is with the patient ones. Allah will try you with loss of wealth. Because we are being tried, of course, in this period of time. How many people have lost their jobs? Over this issue, Wallahu Musta'an. Over this issue, how many people have lost their jobs, lost their, you know, lost their income, haven't seen their parents, can't travel, 
can't go to the masjid. These are difficult times. And you know, at, uh, you know, at some stage, you know, you begin to think at the beginning, you thought that maybe it'll be over in a couple of weeks. Maybe it'll be, it'll be over in a month. And a year and, and more, maybe close to a year and a quarter, a year and a half, we are still there. We are still in the middle of this. And you know, some people are, are thinking to themselves, is there an end to this? Allahu A'lam. Allah knows best. But does that make us less worshippers? Do we now abandon the ibadah of Allah? Do we cause commotion? Do we cause people to die in the streets? Do we break other people's property and belongings? We don't do any of that. Barakallahu feekum. Rather, we are just. We are honest. We are careful. We are forbearing. There are two things that Allah loves in a person. That he is deliberate in his actions. Meaning that he is, you know, he does it because he knows what he's doing. And that he is, you know, that he contemplates and he's forbearing. So Allah loves those two traits in a person. Forbearance and deliberation. So before you act and before you speak and before you talk and before you, you know, do anything, think. Yes, alhamdulillah, that we have people who have knowledge of science. We have people who have, um, alhamdulillah, amongst the Salafiyun, that they are in the foremost in the field of biomedical sciences and medicinal biochemistry and so on. And I don't just say one person. We have many people like this in our communities of Salafi because, because the Salafis are numerous in number. Do all of the Salafis agree upon everything? Of course they don't. We don't agree, but we don't hate them for disagreeing with us. And we don't cause hatred. But at the same time, we are not from those people who, you know, are compelled to blindly follow. We are not from those people who are compelled to be fanatical to a particular opinion or a particular way of thinking. Rather, we are open to change, especially when it comes to the umur, dunyawiyya, you know, to the, to the worldly affairs. And that's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was from the most humble of people. He had tawadu' humility and humbleness, such that he said on an occasion when he saw the people cross-pollinating the date palms, and he said, what are you doing? They said, Ya Rasulullah, when we cross-pollinate like this between the male and the female date palm trees, our yield increases. He said, maybe you shouldn't do that. So that year the crop failed. And they came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this is what you said and we'd stop doing it. And our, the whole of the crop, it failed. Ya Rasulullah. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam informed them. They, when I speak with the words of Allah or speak with that which Allah has revealed to me, then there is no lie in that. Absolutely there is no lie in that. As for your worldly affairs, now he's talking about what they were doing, the cross-pollination, because the Prophet didn't command them not to do it. He said, perhaps you shouldn't do it. He never said, don't do it. He said, perhaps you shouldn't do it. So then he told them, and this is from the humility and the humbleness of Allah's Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. أَنْتُمْ عَالَمْ فِي أُمُورِ دُنْيَاكُمْ You are more knowledgeable. Concerning the affairs of your world, of your worldly affairs, you are more knowledgeable concerning that. So this is the humility and the humbleness of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So in the worldly affairs, the sciences and so on, the scientists will differ. For you to convey the, the correct science, or what you, what, uh, as long as it's built upon knowledge, not built upon kadib, and it's not built upon media rumors, it's not built upon, you know, because the media cannot be trusted. How many times the scholars like Sheikh Al-Fawzan and Sheikh Ibn Baz and Ibn Taymiyyah, the Western media, you can't trust it. The Western media cannot be trusted. And even media in many Muslim countries where, the, you know, it is merely cutting and pasting from Western media, then a person needs to be cautious and make the thabbat. Because the Western media, you know, look how much facade and fitna and corruption that they spread in their daily news about their rulers and about the kings and queens in Britain, in America, the presidents, and how much, how much is true and how much is false. And this is why there's this huge backlash against fake news, but still it cannot be stopped. So we verify everything that occurs, anything that you're going to take, anything that you're going to use, anything that you're going to accept as, as news, and, and you need to verify. If you don't have the ability to verify, then leave it to those who have knowledge. Leave it to those who have knowledge of the affairs of the dunya, whether it be science, whether it be bi the biomedical sciences or bi medicinal biochemistry, or whether it be tib, you know, the issue of, uh, you know, what the physicians have their expertise in and so on. And if they differ between themselves, 
And if you have the ability to learn, then learn. If you don't have the ability to learn, then don't burden yourself with that which you do not understand. And alhamdulillah, trust, you know, you should trust the Salafis, the, the ulama, you should trust them. And you should listen to that which they say from the affairs that affect the Muslims. And at the same time, that, you, that when you see that the scholars, they differ in a particular affair, Al-Albani may differ with Bin Baz, or Bin Baz may differ with Ibn Uthaymeen, or Sheikh Al-Fawzan may differ with Sheikh Al-Albani, in some Amur that are connected to the affairs of fiqh and ishtihad and so on, then you do not enforce your position one upon another person. You know, you don't enforce it as if, if you don't follow me, somehow you have, you, you know, you there is some sort of blood on your hands and you know this type of speech and there is no need for any of that barakallahu feekum that we are mellow we are humble with each, with each other we are lenient with each other barakallahu feekum and follow the truth wherever, wherever, wherever it comes from that's why the prophet sallallahu said to those people because they knew about cross pollination they knew about cross pollination but they still in their desire to follow the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam even though he didn't command them with it he said perhaps you know he's not telling them do it he said perhaps you shouldn't do it and then, when they came to him, look what he said to them. This is from the utmost humility of Allah's Messenger. Where is that humility in us? You know, as du'at, as callers to Allah, as tullab al-ilm. We need to have that same humility. Antum a'lam fi dunyakum, fi umuri dunyakum. You are more knowledgeable concerning your worldly affairs. But the point here I'm making, right from the very beginning, is sabr. Don't blame each other. Don't throw recriminations at each other. Don't... You know, don't enter into that barb of accusing and, you know, falsely speaking about the people and so on. Love the ulama. You know, be with the Muslim rulers if they command you with something. You know, if you know that something is harmful to you, then, you know, don't don't bring harm to yourself. Like the Prophet Sallallahu said, La darul wala dirar, that there is no causing harm upon others and there is no reciprocating harm. So, you know, don't cause other people to be harmed and don't return harm upon people. You know, be easy. Advise. If you have the ability to advise, if you are close to someone in your country or in your nations, then go to them one to one. Ad-deenu nasiha. What is the deen except nasiha? That's what the Prophet Sallallahu said. Ad-deenu nasiha. And he repeated it three times. The religion is sincere advice. But don't despair, my brothers and sisters. We are not despairing people. We are the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. We are the greatest Ummah yawm al-qiyamah. This is the best nation raised up for mankind. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lil-nas ta'muruna bil-ma'ruf wa tanhawna anil munkar wa tu'minuna billah. You are the best nation raised up for mankind. You enjoy all that which is good and you forbid that which is evil and you believe in Allah. This is the traits of this Ummah. Which part of this Ummah? Ahlus Sunnah. Ahlus Sunnah wal Hadith wal Salafiyyah. The people of Sunnah and Salafiyyah and Hadith. They are the ones who, are, who fulfill in, fall into this Hadith. And we follow the example of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We care for the people. We care for our neighbors. We care for our families. We care for our mothers. Prophet, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the right of a Muslim upon a Muslim is five. Raddu salam wa iyadatul marid. Returning the salam. Visiting the sick. Ijao, you know, what uh, tiba uh, al is, and to follow the funeral procession, to follow meaning to pray the janaza prayer in congregation when someone dies. You know, ijabu to da'wa, what tashmitul atis, to accept the invitation when you are invited, and to say yarhamak Allah when your believing brother says alhamdulillah after sneezing. So all of this, barakallahu fikum, is from the rights of a Muslim. Visit your parents. Call your parents. If they live far away from you, then call them and phone them and tell them all of this is khair in the month of Ramadan and outside the month of Ramadan. What are you getting depressed for? Be joyous. Look for good omens in things. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, that he never used to look towards evil omens. Never. Abadan. How, which way the bird is flying in the sky or which way the you know, uh, the, the cat walked or the black cat walked or which direction the crow took. All of this is evil omen. We don't look towards evil and we don't look in, uh, look at evil omens or look for evil omens within people. Barakallahu feekum. We take the people upon the dahir. That's how the Prophet sallallahu did. Take the people upon that which is apparent. What is hidden is between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you see a person healthy, he's healthy. 
If you see a person sick, make dua for him. Don't consider looking at every single person in dunya like he's a threat to you. No, people aren't a threat, neither Muslim nor kuffar. They're no threat to us, barakallahu feekum. Allah, take them upon that which is apparent. If they're good, be good. Be good. Speak to the people with good words. This is how we should behave, barakallahu feekum. There is no harm in any of this. As for that which you are commanded and is compelled upon you by the rulers in the lands that you are living in, then be patient with that. And communicate with each other, talk to each other. There is no harm. These are umur dunyawiyya. These are affairs of the dunya. You know, don't be, you know, if you, if you have something because you've studied and you know something. And as I've mentioned, alhamdulillah, we have in our Salafi community. That's why the scholars such as Sheikh bin Baz and Ibn Thaymeen and other than them from the great scholars, that they used to defer things to those who had knowledge of the worldly affairs. And alhamdulillah, in the UK, in other places, that we have people who have knowledge of science, that they have PhDs in medicinal biochemistry or biochemistry or in you know in, in in other affairs that are connected to medicine and 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 you know in 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 tib and so on and those likewise who have who are who are who have knowledge of the prophetic medicine and natural health treatments allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prov provided all of this into you know among the ranks of the salafis walillahi alhamd People who have knowledge about hijama, people who have knowledge about what to take when a person is ill or, when, or, or to protect a person from falling ill. Like the, like the ajwa dates, like what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the whomsoever eats the dates that, that are grown between these two lava plains, meaning the dates of Medina. And of course in some narrations it mentions ajwa and that is what is normal. But Shaykh Abdul Aziz bin Ba'as said, this applies to all of the dates of Medina. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whatever, whoever eats seven dates, between the two lava plains of Medina. So this is from prophetic medicine that a person takes seven every day. And likewise, we mentioned the honey, like the Prophet ﷺ said, that they are, if there are three things that you people, that, 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 that there is a cure in three things that you people take. And what is it? He mentioned the hijama and the gulp of honey. And then he mentioned cauterization, except that he said, I hate to be cauterized. I hate cauterization. So, hijama and the drinking of honey, the taking of black seed, you know, habbat uh, sauda all of this is from... And we have people, we have scholars who have written about it, the likes of Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah, Imam al-Dahabi, Imam Ibn Hajar, al-Asqalani, rahim, rahimahumullah ta'ala jami'an, that they have written about these affairs, and those who know, they know, and those who don't know, they don't know. But if you don't know, then read. We have, alhamdulillah, you know, the Salafis have written about this, even in the English language. They have translated the works of the scholars, that they have studied these types of affairs from the affairs of the dunya, meaning the medicine of the people of the dunya, and the prophetic medicine which is sent to us through revelation. So what do we do? We have good suspicions and good thoughts of our Lord. Barakallahu feekum. We have good thoughts of our Lord. We follow the example of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رُسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا Indeed, in the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you have a fine example. So take to this advice, barakallahu feekum, and advice to myself and to yourselves. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless your Ramadan and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts your fasts and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts your standing, your siyam and your qiyam. Your qiyam in the night, that Allah accepts that from you. Allah accepts your supplications. Allah accepts the sadaqah that you've given. Allah accepts the supplications that you make to him, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers them. And this is what we seek from all of our, you know, seek in terms of goodness for all, our, all, all of our Salafi brothers and sisters. So this is a short reminder to you. And I hope subhanahu wa ta'ala it has benefited all of us and this was uh, a short reminder that I gave to my brothers and sisters from Trinidad and Tobago on Monday the uh, 28th of Ramadan in the year 1442 after the Hijrah of Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which coincides with Monday the 10th of May in the year 2021 Naam 
So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, accept our deeds and keep us upon right guidance and, ha- and show his mercy to us and gather us on Yawm Al-Qiyamah with the righteous, with the prophets and the messengers and enter us into the gardens of paradise and into the highest of all levels of paradise Al-Firdaus Al-A'la Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een Wassalamu alaykum Wa rahmatullahi